What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Bag Boys. The last video you guys saw that uh, we got the engine fitted up with our brand new old uh, short ratio gearbox. So that's all in there now. I've attached the shifter and we are getting gears beautifully. Um, no more circling. Wait, I think it's in gear ready. Okay, let me try again. Poops. Poops. Easy buzz. Easy buzz, straightforward. Cool. So yeah, that's where we are right now. All of that is done. We've got all the assembly left to do on the car now. First, we're going to start by wrapping this branch with a branch wrap. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, you're just gonna need some stainless steel clamps. You're going to need, you can use normal clamps for the water pipes as well, but this looks a bit better. And then obviously your branch wrap, some water and some gloves for your hands because these this wrap actually has fiber in it. Um, so you don't want to get this stuck in your fingers. Cool, so let's get into it. Alright, so as you guys just saw, we um, got our branch in, our alternators in, we tightened the adjuster belt so that we can tighten this belt. So that's all in, and I tightened it at the bottom of camera because it takes flipping long. This is fully tight, so we can mark that off and move on to the next thing. That took ages, but um, yeah, I got the intake side clean now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean off this gasket. This is a metal gasket, so it's reusable. So I'm gonna clean it properly and then clean the actual intake face as well. And um, put new sealant on and slap it back onto the core. I connected up the radiator and the water pipe. So yeah, just chugging along here. Right, time to fill the gearbox. Fingers crossed it doesn't leak. Don't forget to close the drain plug at the bottom of the radiator. <laughs> So I've got all the wiring plugged in, um, I'd like to neaten it soonish because I see there's like a lot of different color wires in here and whatever, but I've got it all plugged in nonetheless, just need to strap up this cable for the um, alternator and then I've got the Bucky's battery on here, um, which I don't know how good that battery is, but let's see quickly if we can get it to start for the first time in a few months. 
Um, so essentially the fuel pump should prime now. Let's turn the key. Right, fingers crossed. Oh, so that battery is dead. Okay, had to swap the battery now. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what goes on. Alrighty, we up, baby. Luckily, my brother came with a set of old plugs he had from his old service. I run V16 plugs on this engine and as um, soon as I change the plugs and swing it went straight on Oh guys you can expect heat trap to do this eh? no. Alright so um, I don't know if you guys heard in the previous video but uh, the engine was very noisy um, on that startup but we knew this already from before I took the car apart so it's the timing chain uh, tensioner that's noisy which as I explained um, before the timing chain tensioner is oil driven so which means if we don't have enough oil pressure it won't have enough um, strength to tension the chain properly so uh, because of the gunk that was in the engine before I was gonna take the, the head away for cleaning but I thought okay I don't want to take the engine apart when it was running fine right then I um, I was going to throw in engine flush because it helped the first time very well uh, but and I checked the oil level and I noticed that the oil was only at half in the engine I don't know where the oil went to but there was only half so I picked up um, a can of 20W50 now which is slightly thicker than the oil that I normally use but I'm trying to accommodate for the wear that is on the bearings already because of the age of the engine so I'm going with the thick oil we're gonna top up the engine now um, with oil and then hopefully the sound goes away so I'm gonna I'm gonna start up the car now again in here if it's idling properly and then we'll go ahead and assemble it so I can pull it out give it a nice wash and hopefully take it for a drive so yeah let's uh, let's get to it let me get back home quickly and then we can get started we're back in the garage let's just check quickly where this oil level is sitting Whew. so as you can see there I don't know if the camera is picking it up but it's only halfway so let's just fill it up quickly Alright, spot on. Right, let's see if the cold start will work. I did have an issue before with cold starts swinging first time. And now... That's a good number. Sounds quiet so far. Since we're close to operating temperature now, we can actually check the oil pressure. See, 
see it's come down a little bit now. That's that's close to, to operating. Okay, so the sound's gone. It looks like we're in business. Very glad to hear that the engine's nice and quiet. Very, very glad for that. Let's button everything up, get the wheels on, and then <laughs> get the wheels on. My voice is my going away. I'm excited. Um, yeah, and then we can take the, the car for a test. Oh, I noticed the bitchy oily there on the floor, but um, we'll just say bishmills. We'll say God willing. This man put me in an Uber. Yeah, we're gonna fix the seat, bro. box for the first time I don't know if the clutch is set properly yet but I guess you'll see now it's feeling quite low um, first thing I noticed there's no clacking back and forth because of the mounts it's just moving when you release the clutch it's not clicky clacking I expect to hear some sounds of things settling in but yeah let's just see um, a lot of vibration was vibration but not too bad it was worse before because I had a solid mount
feel it was shattering me. I'm hoping that that is now because the petrol was capitating. Mm. See now. So uh, last night I got the Mazda up and running finally. Fun times, this box feels fantastic. It's, it sounds great. Topped up the oil so the sounds are gone. So it's, it's really doing well. Um, the only issue I'm having is that the lift on the car, very soft. It sounds like only the intake side is coming open. And um, after some testing last night, I did figure out that it seems as if the exhaust side of the lift is not working. Actually got a bottle of this engine flush because I know this engine was filled with sludge the last time. Um, so I got this bottle and I'm going to put it in the car now. And I, I've already driven it, sorry. I've driven it now to the space and whatever to warm the oil. Now I'm going to add this in, idle it for 15 minutes. And once that's done, then I will drain the oil again, remove the pickup, take the sump off, remove the pickup, clean it, install it again, and put fresh oil in the car. Before I get started, I just want to show you guys, I'm going to do the testing again later. But basically what you do is, these are the lift solenoids here, eh? exhaust and intake. And they're both plugged in, right? Both plugged in there. Um, as you can see, okay, the wiring must be neatened up, but yeah. So, um, what you do is, you just unplug the power cable. You just unplug the power cable, which is this blue one, on both sides, and then you have the ground still in from the loom, right? And then, you, then I put a power cable on the positive here of the alternator. If you can, you can use your battery, but mine's inside the car. So, power cable from the alternator, and then you just touch it onto that um, solenoid on each one to test if you can hear the lift working properly. So, I'm actually going to do it now while it's idling to get the oil to flow through the lift solenoids um, while the engine flushes in the, in the car. So, yeah, and then I'll show you guys how to test the solenoids manually.
got this clarity to make it now the wire layer as you can see so it's currently active so i'm just holding the car on a higher rev to try and get the oil to, to the oil pressure to be higher and push everything through the sump off as you can see there's some stuff in here some gunk um, I threw some of it out already into the oil drain <laughs> what we do now is we need to remove this uh, baffling plate and then take this pickup off and then we can see what's inside the pickup as well got the pickup off as you guys can see in here on the sides okay this pickup was modified by the previous owner yeah, I didn't do this but yeah they on the insides they you can see all that crud that dirt stuck in there so that to clean out and then I just threw some of it out just to show you so it's actually like it's hard like a hard grime that's what happens when you don't service your car on time guys so service your car regularly please then this won't happen to your engine and then I also notice these two bolts on this cap are loose for some reason so I'm going to take the tapper cover off and check all of them and then take the love solenoids off and clean that out as well. So once everything's off, we can begin cleaning and then reassembling and then um, fill up with new oil. everything off there you can see not much slut left in the head that was way way worse you couldn't even see these caps so we took it apart previously and um, cleaned it up and whatever but yeah I just double check all these 10 more bolts now they are all still as they were um, and then I tightened down these two I don't know why they were loose uh, yeah soaking in diesel now that's the timing chain tensioner the oil pickup and the lot of solenoids and then I just threw some in on the tapper cover as well um, yeah I'm not gonna let this sit too long I see it's leaking out already Something that I forgot to show you guys is this little thing as well. This is a lift uh, screen or filter. So um, I did dip this in diesel. I'm just going to blow it out properly and then um, install it back into the lift solenoid. You can actually replace these, but um, I didn't get around to buying one. I actually forgot when I was at the shop. Uh, you just turn it until it sits flush. It doesn't have to be tight. Goes in there like that, and this is the solenoids. So I've got my pickup back on the engine. Um, and I've got the, the tray on there as well so um, yeah that's just a simple install it's a couple of bolts 10 mil and 12 mil and there's a metal gasket on the pickup which you don't put any sealant on 
Then I cleaned up the oil pan and now it looks funny on the video, but that's where the paint's chipped previously. So now I'm gonna apply some sealant, attach it to the engine, and then I go around with sealant here on the edges again because these this oil pan leaks, man. I don't know if it's a common thing, I've heard it's a common thing. Um, and also when you put the oil pan on the when you put the engine on the floor on the oil pan, it dents it. So this one is a bit dented up. So yeah, I'll put some extra sealant on as a protectant. Ready for oil? All sealed at the bottom. Alright, let's get the rest. Right, let's go test, see if we have left. Engine sighing much quieter. Now that I'm in the cabin, I can hear. Like it on the freeway now, like I could hear it clearly opening 
So um, I'm gonna take that as a win. It's not as loud as it used to be, but I can hear it opening. The car feels great. So yeah, we got a lot done this morning. Um, yeah, a lot done. The car is sounding better. Lift is working. I would say I'm 80% sure because it used to be louder, but I'm gonna drive it now over the weekend and test it out. Um, and then I just need to fix the bonnet, but I'm gonna do that off camera. Um, I think that was enough for today, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video that I put together. I hope that uh, you enjoyed finally seeing the car driving. Um, I appreciate all of your support. So if you enjoyed this video and you're looking forward to the next one, please go ahead and comment, like the video, and please don't forget to subscribe. For now, Bag Boys, we out. Peace.